A month or so ago, I published a short series of videos about creating a sealed ecosphere based on water, weed and sediment from a local pond. That project came to an end when I decided to return the contents to the pond after I found a newt tadpole in the jar. No regrets. I decided to start another ecosphere, this time closer to home, starting with water and sediment from the rainwater butts in my garden. We'll take a look at how those got started in a moment, but first I want to answer some questions about this series in general. A lot of people asked about the equipment I use. The jar is just a one litre jar from Jumbo Hot Dogs, very thoroughly washed out. If you've got questions about the idea of frankfurter sausages in jars, there's a link in the video description to another video entirely on that topic. After filling the jar and sealing it, I labelled it with the source and the date of collection, which helped me a lot to keep track of what week we were in. The camera I used for wide shots is just my Huawei P20 Pro smartphone, which is actually the main camera for most of my videos. To hold it steady, I used this clamp arm device. I actually use these and similar things quite a lot for my videos, for holding cameras, lights and other small studio equipment. They're also great to take outdoors instead of a heavy tripod. They're generally poseable until this central handle is tightened, then they lock in position. The microscope I used was this one. It's one of hundreds of similar models available all over eBay, Amazon, other places. I got this one from Banggood and I think I paid about £40 for it. It has a 2 megapixel sensor but the maximum video resolution is only 640x480 pixels, about one third of a megapixel. And the video frame rate varies significantly depending on the lighting. Now these USB microscopes are often sold with quite dishonest descriptions of their resolution and specifications. And some of them use software interpolation tricks to produce large pixel dimension images from a very low pixel resolution sensor. My advice if you're shopping is to buy from somewhere that has a good return policy. I used parts of the flimsy, mostly plastic microscope stand combined with one of my clamp arms, affixed to the windowsill so I could position the microscope and focus it quite carefully. Despite the quality limitations of this kit, with a great deal of patience, trial and error, I did manage to get some surprisingly good footage. At maximum magnification, this is what the millimetre markings on a ruler look like. So this is easily good enough to be able to resolve microorganisms, including some of the larger single-celled things. So that's equipment. One other question people asked a lot was whether I had to open the jar and let in oxygen. The answer is no, there were plants inside, and the light from the window allows them to produce oxygen, as well as to consume the wastes from the animals inside the jar. So now it's time to start a new jar, and we'll need some pretty specialist equipment for this, comprising a jam jar on a stick. I have a water butt attached to each of two rain gutter downpipes on my house, and I'll be collecting a little water from each of them, and literally scraping the bottom of the barrel to try to collect any sediment that might be down there. The water in here has a slightly oily sheen to it, and a pungent, sulphurous smell. I don't expect to find fish or frogs in here, but there are a variety of different ways that organisms might find their way into this barrel. Either being washed down off the roof, so including anything that could get carried up there by wind or birds or squirrels, and the same for the tree that overhangs part of the roof. It's also possible that things might have climbed, crawled or even grown up the inside of the pipe from the ground or from the drains underneath and also the lids on these barrels are not a perfect fit, so there's a possibility of things making their way up the outside of the barrel and then sneaking under the lid. Anyway, I collected the water, sealed the lid and then washed the outside of the jar. Then I labelled it with the source and the date. There wasn't very much sediment or debris in there. I suppose the feeder pipe for the barrel was pretty narrow, so any leaves or larger objects just don't make it in there. We don't have any plants in there, at least nothing I can see at the start. So there is a chance that this jar will go somewhat or totally anaerobic. 
which might make for a very short experiment, but I'll seal it up anyway and we'll see what happens. So right on the start, in the first couple of days, it was very obviously teeming with living things, absolutely swarming with these little swimming specks here. And this is why it would probably be a supremely bad idea to drink the water from this barrel. At this stage, there are not many things I could identify inside the jar. There are these multitudinous little swimming specks, roundish in shape, but as yet unidentified. And these longer, more slender swimming things, also unidentified. There are also some of these. I don't actually know if we're looking at crustaceans, insects, or something else, but pretty certainly arthropods is all I can really say. Maybe someone watching can assist in identification. This one appears to be tangled up or trapped in a thread-like substance attached to the inside of the jar. It struggled like this for hours. I don't know if it got away alive, but it wasn't in the same place the next day. So that's all we have for now. A jar full of water, thousands of little swimming things, and some small plant debris and sediment. We'll follow up in a week's time to see if anything interesting develops in this jar. I'm not expecting huge excitement, but it will be interesting to see what happens. Especially as the water is exposed to daylight inside the jar, will we see any green plants growing? Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.